Welcome to the latest edition of the Giants Hangout, our weekly roundtable discussion as we recap the latest game through three different themes and also discuss the latest going on with the New York Giants. Lance Meadow, Howard Cross, Russ Salzberg with you as the Giants fell to the San Francisco 49ers on Thursday night football, 30 to 12. So they are now one and two on the season. And today we're going to focus on three themes, one being tackling, third downs, as well as penalties and mix in a whole lot more as we move along here. And Howard, I want to start with you because we talked about this building up to the game. When you play a team like the San Francisco 49ers, you have to be so well-disciplined in terms of tackling because of their elusiveness and their ability to take advantage of yardage after the catch. And I was going through the numbers, and to me, this tells it all. The San Francisco 49ers had 16 plays of 10 or more yards. So that's right there, an automatic first down. And two... Third and 15 and third and 13 came on the same drive, which ultimately led to a Niners touchdown. To me, I think that sums up the biggest issue for the Giants on Thursday night. I think that's part of it. I think, you know, when you think about tackling and, and the third downs, they, they kind of you know coincide with each other. The big thing was, was that they weren't really rallying to the ball. Uh, one guy would get there and the other guys would be kind of like, uh, he's going to get him, and then all of a sudden there's a juke move, and he's he's out the gate. Um, McFadden had like some; he, he did okay, but then he had a lot of he had a lot of missed tackles, and those tackles led to some first downs, you know. And and it's a team of of guys that are not necessarily super elusive, but they will run over you, they'll run through you. Debo, uh, Kit, you know, Kittle out there, they, they did not care. You could hit them and hit them and hit them. They were trying to deliver a blow and not you know not take a blow. So that. That is a big thing. That's what caused the third down explosion. Um, and it, it just – they just couldn't seem to get get the guys down. And what I mean by that, can't be ripping at the ball. You got Everybody's got to rally to the ball. It's going to be three or four hats on them every time. And that's not usually how they're tackling right now. Well, I, I couldn't agree with, with you, you anymore, Howard. Uh, to me, I'll, I'll be frank with you guys, of – I don't remember a Giants game – and you know I love the Big Blue, but I don't remember a Giants game that I watched that annoyed me as much as last night. It, last night annoyed me more than the Dallas game because the Dallas game, 40 nothing, you got your shorts blown off, boom. Mm -hmm. Even the first half against the Cardinals. But last night, you know, to me, it was – I'll disagree with Howard. It wasn't about tackling. It was about the lack – it was a total lack of tackling. I, I was absolutely dumbfounded. All we were hearing going into this game, the Giants are missing Saquon. The Giants are missing Andrew Thomas. That's fine. But what the Giants missed more than anything last night was the fundamental ability to tackle. And, you, you know, you alluded to the the uh, third and 13 or third and 15, third and 13. There was also a third and 12, which – would have been a first down, but they didn't need that because of, I think, was a roughing the passer. Or that was the Leonard Williams penalty, correct. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I mean, to me, you know, and, and you know, when Howard used the term, was a great term. I, I wasn't using that, but rallying around the ball, I was going to say, hey, guys, you're third and 15, you're third and 13, batting down the hatches. You got to make a play right now. You got to do something. You know, I don't want to hear this business we were hanging around. They were hanging around. Yeah, they were hanging around. So they had to say to themselves, you know what? We're lucky. We were hanging around. We're still in this. And they didn't make a play. That, to me, was the most discouraging thing for me, the, the inability to come up with a play. I, I think that the third downs were like, you know, massive plays because they were throwing the ball to the outside, short screens on the outside, and that's when the, the play would happen. A couple of times there was a, like a blatant holding on the, on the edge. But – if you don't prove that you can beat a team, if you don't prove that you can make plays, the officials are not going to give you the call. So on the edge out there, they were grabbing hold. Uh, the, the, the defender would be spinning off of the off of the block, trying to get to the get to the tackle. He couldn't get there. And if you if the first guy didn't hit him to slow him down, he was gone. You saw McFadden miss him a few times in the hold, and you saw when he when it was different when he would run out, and the guy that couldn't get started because he was on top of him so fast and tackle him. The, the 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 third downs were mostly tackles, tackling, 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 and the and the two or three penalties that happened, and one of them was legit. Uh, the other two were kind of ghost penalties. Uh, the the hit on the quarterback Purdy, 
he is full body weight. He laid to the side. Purdy's like a small person. I don't know how how else you can do that. Um, the phantom uh, uh, illegal touching on Kittle, like he bumped him when he came off the line. He ran the route, and the, the official threw a flag, said, "Oh, you illegally touched him," and like there was no one near him. So you know there was like you know they'll go back and look at that and review that, but it doesn't do you any good because when the calls are going against you, they're just going against you. You know, well, with uh, respect again, to the penalties, right. go ahead, Russ. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say Leonard Williams' full body weight, Howard, went down on Brock Purdy. I mean, that to See, me you're, was a you're, textbook you're, call. You're, you're a small man, so that's what you think. <laughs> he, no, he I know him. what my eyes told he, me, Howard. He wasn't laying all on him like Brock Purdy was under his arm and his side. Like, there's nothing he can do. If he, if he goes in, if Brock Purdy has the ball, he tackles him that way, that's a penalty. If he... There's no way to tackle a guy or, or, or to sack the quarterback if you're hitting him head on. There just isn't. Well, you're arguing against physics, essentially, and saying that the way the rule is written, and I understand that, but the way the rule is written is if you bring your body weight on top of the quarterback, it says but this in the rule book, it's a bang, bang fully, play, the officials are going to call it. I know, but he wasn't laying fully on top of him. He hit him and went to the side and laid on him, and Brock Purdy's like this wide, and Leonard Williams is this wide. So it doesn't look it's it's not gonna look you know, it's not gonna be what you're looking at. You're going, oh, there, there's nothing that a guy, a big guy can do if they're gonna hit a guy. All they can do is try to throw him down. That's literally the only thing you can try to do is try to grab his jersey and throw him to the ground. It's yeah, like spin him to the ground. Listen, that, that that penalty, that play, no matter who's right or who's wrong in this discussion, to me, that, that's always been tough from the beginning because you, you, you're literally in the middle of making like as I'm I'm flying through the air, and this is not just for Leonard Williams, it, it could be for the opposing team. Am I supposed to be Superman and kind of slide it off to the side? It, it, it's almost an impossible thing. And I, I do understand, uh, Howard, that, you know, it looks worse when it's a smaller guy as opposed if, to a bigger guy. If, you, if, he, you, if, he's, if he's sacking Josh Allen, if he's sacking, like, you know, one of the other tall, big quarterbacks, that is not a penalty. But because he's a small guy, they're throwing the flag. And I'm not being – mean or anything but that's just that's just all it is oh pretty size could have played a role but i think the bottom line is if you're an official howard and you see that play at full speed i think more often than not you're throwing the flag i mean there was a play with chris jones and Derek carr on monday night football last year mm -hmm. if you remember and that was sort of a borderline one because chris jones tried to make an effort to put both hands on the ground to brace for the fall and they also they called the penalty because bang bang play at full speed the official doesn't have enough time to determine whether or not you put a pinky finger down or a right thumb to determine whether or not you're avoiding putting your full body weight down on the quarterback. So every time that a quarterback drops back and throws, you have a full facial to hit him. You should not hit him. You should just like jump in the air and try to bat the ball down. And, and hope well, that, that. that could be part of the last week or wrap him up and then sort of twirl him down to the side, which you were hitting on to avoid having your full body weight. Go on. So let me, let me explain to you guys what happens when you twirl a guy that's much smaller than you to the ground. You tear his knees. Well, injuries playing. are always going to be a risk. Sure. That's not a risk. That's what happens. When a guy that weighs 310, 320 pounds, grabs a guy that weighs about 200 pounds and spins him to the ground, his feet are planted. He spins almost and tears his knees almost or, or ankle almost every time. You can't well, do it that way. We could talk about the method of tackling or, or however you want to call it, but the bottom line is what this morning is all about, what last night was all about, was the lack of tackling. I was yeah. absolutely dumbfounded. Listen, I'm not taking anything away from Brock Purdy, but I'm hearing how terrific he was and terrific this. You know, it's a, it's very easy to look terrific when you hit a guy for three quick yards and he turns it into 15 or 20. I mean, we know how terrific Debo Samuel is. We know how terrific uh, Christian McCaffrey is. But the lack of tackling last night, and to me, that was, you know, I, I don't mean to be beating this to the ground, but that to me was the game last night. The lack of execution. I think it was Dory Jackson said it best. We didn't execute. We didn't tackle. That that was it. You, you know, what does... uh, uh Dave's and, and Joe Shane like to say, we want players smart, tough, dependable. Well, you know what? You want to call tough being gritty? 
They were not dependable last night. Not not at all. And I was quite surprised about it. Almost you know, team, shocked. Yeah, teams that don't tackle will never they'll they'll they'll, have, they'll be in bad position all the time to, when it comes out to the end of the game. Well, you look at the Arizona game. We talked about this. James Conner, how many runs did he get as a result of an initial missed tackle? So, you know, we're getting at guys' themes that are continuing game to game. And that's when it becomes troublesome. And if you look at the plays that I was referencing earlier, I mentioned 16 plays of 10 or more yards. Well, of those 16, 10 of them were off short passes. There were really only two times that Purdy threw down the field. He threw a 40-yard pass to Samuel over the middle. And then he threw the deep touchdown pass towards the right corner of the sideline. So the bottom line is the majority of the throws were short to medium range, which means they were not going to use the baseball analogy, Howard. They were not going for the home run, the Niners. The Niners mm -hmm. were going for the base hits and the doubles. And the problem is the Giants couldn't throw to third base in time to prevent <laughs> them from doing some damage control. Right. I mean, that to me is the best way to put it. You, you're right. They they, they turn, turn the doubles into triples. Yeah, you're a hundred percent. That's a good analogy. They, they, but, but, you know, looking back, guys, and, and thinking about it, I know the Giants are at fault. This is a team that has a lot of yards after catch. This is just a team that uh, yards after catch. Yep. That, that's what they do. So, you you know, the whole uh, – and I, I'm pretty sure the coach has probably talked about it, but the, the whole idea is to, like, okay, we got to rally to the ball, we got to rally to the ball, we got to rally to the ball, we got to rally to the ball. Every team, some teams do it better than others. Our team wasn't doing it last night. You, you know, Howard, let me let me ask you this, being the former player of this trio here. Um, mm -hmm. you, you, we always hear, uh, Brian Dable in particular, Dave's always says, you know, especially after a game like that, it's, you know, it's on all of us, but it's it starts with me, starts with the coaching, starts with the coaching. We have to coach better. We have to coach better. Okay, I, I'll buy that to a point. But to me, when something is as fundamental as what we got to see last night or the lack of the fundamentals, isn't that just on you, the player, players? I, I mean, the emphasis has to be on on what it, whatever it is. It's a different world, so I, I can't explain it in any other term. It's just a different world. Some teams are better at it than others. Some teams get it, get it more than others. It's personalities of actual players as well. The rally into the ball, the running, the, you know, like run, like if you watch our team on a kickoff, uh, we'll kick the ball off and they kind of like jog off the field about the 20, 25 yard line. You watch another team does kickoff, the entire team runs into the end zone. So I, I just don't know, again, what the communication is or what, what's being said or what's not being said. And if the players are doing it and, and if there is a reason for them doing it the way they're doing it, running to the ball is, is something that, you know, has to be emphasized constantly. Every time you have a practice, if you're having a walk to everybody to the ball, get into the camera shot. That's something that's said a thousand times. Again, I haven't been in every practice, so I don't know if that's, if that's a big emphasis to the team. There's a lot of schemes. There's a lot of blitzes. There's a lot of coverage. That's a big emphasis, learning that stuff. Running to the ball, your sense of basic fundamental might be, but if you're not screaming it and yelling it every second of every practice, it's not something that will be focused on until someone really focuses on it. Not to make an excuse for the Giants, but I think what also makes the Niners so challenging is, to me, it's the combination of power and elusiveness or slipperiness because if you saw a lot of those missed tackles some of it was Debo Samuel carrying three or four guys on his back and gaining an extra few yards and then there were other situations where McCaffrey would just slip through a narrow alley and then gain all of a sudden five or six additional yards so some teams you know Howard it's the power and then other teams, it's the slipperiness. The Niners, to me, are the ideal combo of both. And that's what really presented a huge task and a huge challenge for the Giants on Thursday. Yeah, if, if the Giants were focused on getting those guys to the ground at all costs, it would have looked a little different. It would have. I, I'm not a big, you know, I'm like, oh, Brock Purdy's won seven in a row. Brock Purdy. So I watched him last night. He's not this super impressive quarterback. He's just a quarterback that's on a team that's so good around him that he does – doesn't make a lot of mistakes. The Giants should have had two interceptions, maybe four. Uh, the ball hit their hands, so you got to make the most of those opportunities. He was giving it up. They just didn't. They just didn't make the plays. Their their offensive players turned into defensive players pretty quickly when the ball's like kind of flut fluttering through the air, and that that was like a big noticeable thing as well.
Kittle certainly did that on the yep. play to uh, Dory Jackson. Uh, and no, you're did, right. He and made Debo a good did, And Debo yep. did in the end zone. He, he came over the top of Banks to, to knock the ball down. Yeah. And you needed that because I think what you were hitting on, Howard, is the fact that Purdy had a rough go in the early stages of the game. I thought the Giants got some pressure on him, and he was trying to maybe press the envelope a little bit too much, and that's how the ball ricocheted off of a few guys, and they were fortunate that they had some fortuitous bounces that went their way. But as the game progressed, Purdy, I think, was put in a position, and this goes back to the mistackling, where the Giants didn't put the onus of the game on the quarterback, where they said, Brock, you have to go above the X's and O's and make a play, and that's a reflection of the buildup of constantly mistackling. Well, I think when you say that, you have to think about this. The players around him go above the X's and O's to make plays, and I don't think sure. people realize that. When we're talking about Purdy, we're putting Purdy in, in a almost in an elite category when he's not actually an elite quarterback. Debo is elite. Kittle is elite. McCaffrey is elite. The, the ball was thrown behind. They're running full speed. McCaffrey caught one diving uh, to, to scoop it up to make sure he gets a first down. Those are elite plays that you're making. And, you know, somewhere down the line, some of our skill guys are going to have to go above the numbers and try to make plays for, you know, for, for their quarterback. It's just you're looking at a team, and, and this is how I, I see it. You're looking at a team that believes they're going to go deep in the playoffs and win a Super Bowl. You're looking at a team that plays with a, with a huge sense of urgency. Everybody's rallying into the balls. There were not a lot of individual tackles by the by the Niners. There were group tackles. Every once in a while, there might be a sack. There was two sacks, but for the most part, there were three to four guys hitting the hitting the ball carrier or the receiver every time. Even in the, even when they were throwing passes down the field, the receivers were like almost shying away from making catches because the guy was bearing down in front of them as the guy was trailing them. Howard, let, let me ask you this. Uh, you, you have this situation of we're talking about tackling, you know, and to me, it is the theme or, or as we say, the lack of. Well, how do you as a as a former player? I mean, I realize you were an offensive player, but do you practice that? You know, do you just got the, do the coaches say, let's get into this, hit the sleds? What? It just I, I'm baffled by what I got to see. As I said, last night annoyed me more, far more than the 40 nothing whitewash from Dallas in game one. And what usually happens, well, I don't know, every coach has got a different philosophy, but I've had coaches in the past when we had a game like this. We'd go in and watch the entire game together, offense, defense, and special teams so we could see. And they would just call out, you know, okay, well, so-and-so, no hustle. This player, no hustle. This player, no hustle. This player, good play guy, good play guy. We're going to do this way to get the – Bring your feet here. Bring your feet there. Hey, you can't hold them. You can't false start. They would go through and name all the plays so it wouldn't be, well, we're doing our job, but they're not doing their job kind of moment. It would be everybody needs to see together how we could do better. And, you know, that would come early in the season to try to get everybody on the same page. I think that the teams are all on the same page. I think they really got each other's back. I think that the level of play is picking up every game. It's just that, you play Dallas, which is, who has an elite defense the first game. It's raining and pouring, and the game got away from you before you know it. You play Arizona, who's just trying to hang in there, and they don't have enough to stop you. And then you come out and have a pretty decent game leading up to about the third quarter with, with the team that's, that, you know, a lot of people are picking to be in the Super Bowl. So they've played, you know, two out of three teams have been super elite. And now they, you know, they got to figure out how to close out some of these games, and they got to get ready to play, you know, Dallas again. They got to get ready to play Philadelphia. They got to get ready to play the Miamis and the Buffaloes of the world. But you got to be prepared for elite teams. You got to look at it and see their urgency and match their intensity and their urgency right away. Another thing is that the Dallas game showed uh, on on film that okay, we're going to push these guys around. They make jokes about it and had fun with it. Arizona came out and says, let's try to jump on them early and see if we can get them out of the game early. Uh, San Francisco tried that, but the Giants met their intensity early on. So they got to be able to sustain that from for 60 minutes from the first whistle to the last whistle. That's what they're yeah, going to have that, to do. That was, well, that's what was surprising to me because I thought I thought that first quarter, hey, they score, Giants answered. That, that was a really good 
first quarter. I said, you know what? They're in this. They, they, they came to play. And then it just, what they were doing kind of disappeared. It, it, it was, I don't know if they felt, well, you know, we're in this game. It, it, it just, you know, no, I, I hate to say when somebody is not mentally prepared, but just it, back, it's like back they let it go. Man, they got, they got into a position. The Giants held them, kept them behind the sticks, third and 13, third and 15, third and whatever. And all of a sudden you throw a screen pass, a screen pass that goes for, you know, 15 yards, a screen pass that goes for 19 yards. You got to rally to the ball. You just got to rally to the ball. Now, the game before that, when they were playing Arizona, they played sticks coverage, which I thought may have been the answer in this in this game. But I don't know if those guys could have could have tackled them if they if the guy got a full head of steam. So it's like six and one and a half dozen the other. I understand the pressure he brought on Purdy, but you know if you got everybody in the backfield at the quarterback, you're leaving the, the secondary guys to make the tackle, and they got to be right on top of you or touching you to make the tackle. And as you can see, if you're touching them, they're throwing a flag. Well, we've been highlighting the differential in third down, and I want to peel back the layers a little bit more with that because I think that's another big theme coming out of the Thursday game. And also, when you face a double-digit deficit at the half of each of your three games and you can't score at a high rate, you're going to put yourself in a very precarious spot regardless of the opposition. So the bottom line is the Giants were 3 of 12 on third down. The Niners were 9 of 16. You look at both of those numbers, they're on opposite ends of the spectrum. And this leads me to the Giants' offensive side of things. If you can't sustain drives and you miss tackles on defense, you're going to put yourself in a position where you're playing catch up and the clock is going to continue to tick and you're not going to have enough time to overcome that deficit because here's what is synonymous, Howard, with the third down differential. Time of possession. The Niners held the ball for nearly 40 minutes. The Giants, half of that. I mean, that's nearly plus 20-minute edge to San Francisco. And, you know, I've been talking with former coaches and GMs, and I'm curious your perspective, Howard. They usually tell me when you get X amount of minutes in time of possession, you want the point total to be about equivalent to that, if not slightly more. Now, it didn't add up for the Niners. They had 39 minutes of time of possession, 30 points. But I'll take that ratio as opposed to what the Giants had, which was 20 minutes of time of possession, and they only managed 12 points in this game. Well, you know, I, I would jump all over the Giants' offense, but they had a, a, a patchwork offensive line. Uh, the guys did play pretty well, uh, uh, stopping both in company. But when it came down to it and it started to get to the nitty-gritty in big big moments, third and long, the interior of the line would be blown back totally. Uh, I don't want to call anybody pressure. out. But, yeah. you know, pressure up the middle, Daniel scrambling, taking him out of the, the whole uh, pass set of reading who's open, who's not open, trying to wait for guys to cut back to get, get to him. So when you're talking about that, remember that Andrew Thomas is on the sideline. You, you got Azuda playing out of the left tackle. You got uh, Lemieux, uh, is that right, uh, playing a guard. Uh, so you got some different people playing in there. If Brennison's in there, maybe a different story. If, if Thomas is in there, maybe a different story. You got your – all-star, all-pro kind of running back out there that, that that's kind of the, our version of Christian McCaffrey and, and Saquon that requires you to pay attention to him. He's not in the game. D so how they're, they're, they're playing the game with – they're playing the game, with, you know, kind of playing one of the best teams in the league, shorthanded. And I thought they fought valiantly, but they were shorthanded on that, in, that, in that game. You know, I, I don't think uh, Jalen Hyatt had any targets last night. Do you think that was basically because the coaches knew that Daniel was not going to have time to unload unload one uh, deep? He tried to get the ball down the field to him. He tried to get himself set. He just didn't have the time. When they said when I got in the game and I, I had beat somebody one time, clearly beat him. And Daniel scrambling to the sideline and throwing the ball to the edge, trying to you know just trying to make something happen. He doesn't have time to set his feet and throw it. You you have to have be able to get a five-step or a seven-step drop. Maybe not so much seven because with the defenses we played, you're not going to get seven, but you need to at least get to that fifth step so you can like reach back and let it go. If you can't get back there, it's a, it's a, hard, it's a hard play. And the yeah, bells right. and the whistles don't make much of a difference if you don't have time to survey the field. Yeah, so in like, in the, and the pressure was coming. You know, Bosa may have had a sack, uh, had a sack because they tried to – you know, bait him into believing they were going to block down on him and they put Bellinger on the outside and Bosa's like looked over at him like, 
if he's supposed to block me, he's not close enough. And he, and he just ran into the backfield. Boy, boy just, that, that was like he passed him like he was, uh, you, know, you know, just. I've been, I've been put in that position by coach where, you know, you're going to fake a, a quote unquote bootleg out to that side. And, and the, the defensive end has to make a decision. Is he going to try to stay with the quarterback on the bootleg or is he just going to go? And when a guy just goes, you look really silly standing out there chasing him from behind because you're just not close enough to him to stop him. That was red carpet treatment or the matador pulling away all of a sudden and a free path to the quarterback. Yeah. And they were fortunate that they didn't get a safety out of that too, by the yeah. way. And the, the other thing is that, that yeah, the way I would design the play is I would design a play, I do the bootleg. And I know the bootleg only works when you turn your back and roll out. I would never turn my back to, the, to their best pass rusher. I'd, I'd roll right at him and look at him. Now, the other thing that I want to bring into the equation, Howard, and you alluded to this, you said Saquon wasn't there. That clearly changes the dynamics in terms of what the Niners defense is looking for. Completely mm -hmm. agree with you. What I also thought, though, was missing in Thursday's game was we saw Daniel Jones's legs play a prominent role in previous games and give some of these really tough defenses trouble. And I was listening to the Niners players speak after the game, and they said they were preparing for a lot of opportunities for Daniel to take off in that game because that's given them trouble in the past. And the Giants only ran the ball 11 times for 29 yards. So I think it says a lot about San Francisco being able to focus on Daniel with Saquon on in the equation, whereas if Saquon's in the backfield, now you got to take a little bit more chances and maybe Daniel has more opportunities to take off and run and get in some more manageable third downs for the team. I mean, yep. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Russ. I, I mean, yes, yes and no. I think that Daniel running, you're when you play against elite defenses, you, you saw in the Dallas game when he tried to run, he was having a hard time. Most of his runs came off a broken pass. pass you know, sure. they got in the backfield, he rolled out and he had to run. Uh, in this game, you know, they didn't have possession long enough. So when they tried to break out and let him run, he ran twice, maybe for eight yards here. You know, that was that was a big, big moment for him. Yeah, I, I kudos to, to um, San Francisco and, and the defense because it, it's okay for them to say, well, yeah, we expected to uh, uh, see Daniel Jones run more. Well, to their credit, because they expected that, as I used the expression before, they battened down the hatches. There was no places for him to run to. That, to me, was, was a big story as well. But listen, you know – the quarterback's ability to run, and we certainly know Daniel's ability to run is, is you know, excellent. But when they know he can't get into his passing game, it, it just, you know, it's the hip bones connected to the, the thigh bone and blah, blah, blah. You, you know the story. It just wasn't happening last night. If you watch the game, guys, you, you notice that the defense is getting closer and closer to the line of scrimmage. And that lets you know, like, only time they kind of backed off was with Hyatt and, and Slayton were out on the same side. They back up a little bit to make sure those guys weren't going to, like, juke them and run by them. But if, it, if if that wasn't the case, they were like, get a little closer, make it harder, make him have to make a decision even faster than he wants to. Because you come to the point where you realize, okay, the Giants don't have the luxury, as you were hitting on, to run the football because of game flow and the score. You also know that they've lacked explosive plays throughout the course of the game because they don't have time for Daniel Jones to throw down the field. So, I mean, you're pretty much, you're laying out golden opportunities for the Niners to dictate the terms of the game. And Dallas was in the same position. They jump out to that early lead. The defense is dictating. They're basically telling the Giants, okay, we're putting you in a hole. We're taking away all of your tools, essentially, that are in the shed. And good luck trying to make up for that and crawl your way out of it when you basically only have your hands and your fingernails to accomplish that feat. I think I think in this game it wasn't as bad as all of that. I think that it just like I said, like when you're got a patchwork offensive line and some some guys are coming free free runners a lot. You got to okay, we got to figure out how to get around a free runner. Then you start rolling right or rolling left. When you roll, I, I know everybody likes to roll out pass. When you roll out, you cut off half the field. It's easier to defend unless you know unless you got a guy that's streaking down the field and you're going to throw it over the back end of him of everyone, but. It's just you're rolling out to protect yourself from from the pass rush. You're giving yourself half the field, and they're just when they see you roll out, instead of them coming up to, to tackle you, they're just rolling across the field to stay in front of the receivers and stay between you and the receiver. That's that's how rollouts work. If, if rollouts work best when your running game is really going.
If your running game's not really going, they just kind of like follow the person with the ball. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I was hearing and, and some reading stuff this morning that, well, Daniel wasn't at his best. Well, okay, that's fair to say, but the reason Daniel wasn't at his best was the Niners' game plan didn't allow him to be at his best. I mean, I, I think I think yes and no. I think that, again, when I watch Brock Purdy play, he's not elite. He's not super special. But the guys that are playing around him, they want to be super special. Kittle played the first game of the season with growing or whatever, hasn't missed a beat. He's catching the ball. He looks like an old Bavaro film of San Francisco, the way he's running the ball. Debo Samuels caught a pass over the middle, and I think our linebacker hit him, and he spun like a top off of Debo Samuels. Yep. You, you, you know, you, you see uh, uh, Christian McCaffrey running. He doesn't look like a big guy, but he's like – he's quick through the first step through the hole, and then if you don't tackle him, he's just – they're just not going down. Or keep Like, they're doing a – I'm going to run until you stop me from running. I'm going to keep moving until you physically bring me to the ground. And that's that was the difference in their offense and our offense. Our offense, we didn't have our you know our our big our big our big gun at, at back. Okay, so we'll work around that. We'll 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 use our we have a big tight end. Our tight end was struggling in the game. He, he looked a little gun shy from time to time. But he's you know very talented guy, extremely everything. But he like Kittle caught the ball, and lowered his shoulder. Our guy's not going to catch the ball and lower his shoulder and run over anybody. It's just two different people. Yeah, one of the plays you're referring to, I believe it was Isaiah Simmons hit Samuel, and then he wound up gaining the first down because it was yeah. a pinball machine, and all of a sudden he thrust forward for five additional yards. And Based on what we're talking about, by the way, in terms of the difference between the Niners and the Giants, guys, it's not a coincidence that the only time the Giants scored a touchdown Thursday night was a result of a special teams penalty on the Niners, the fair catch interference, right? That gave him right. 15 yards. And then if you recall, a defensive pass interference call came shortly after that. So that's mm -hmm. what it took for the Giants to score a touchdown, 30 yards in penalties between the special teams and the defense. Outside of that, it was tough sledding. Very difficult mm -hmm. to move the football yeah, continuously. They they had they like the Giants would move the ball, they'd move it again. They'd been a third and short, and then somebody would, you know, somebody would false start or yep. something would happen and or they'll let somebody go in the middle. It's that's just the, that's the way it works. If you cause it, he's like, okay, we're going to make the quarterback roll out. We're going to make him roll to his right. Uh, okay, we're going to shift our defense to the left. So he's going to roll to his right. You guys go to the left, and we'll be right in front of him as he's ready to throw the ball. They did that a lot. Yeah, you well, know, I, one, I, one, one positive. Yeah. One positive that uh, it, I was glad to see made a couple of catches, but you know, I didn't even know if we were going to see him. Was seeing Wandell Robinson back in there? I mean, to me, mm -hmm. that was good to see. And and in fact, you know, he made a nice grab uh, on a big third down uh, catch uh, in that first drive that led them to the, the field goal. Yeah. Well, he, like I said, all, everything's, they're going to get, they're going to get a probably, they, if they're not injured, they're probably going home and, and taking a break from football right now. And if it was me and I was playing on the team, I would be studying film to see how I could get better and, and figure out how to get everyone around me better. Uh, there's just the way that we used to do it back in the day. I wouldn't go home and, hang out with my dad or go to my college and watch a college game, I'd be right back in the drawing board trying to figure out, okay, what do I need to do now to get this done? And that's what, you know, it's going to be interesting to see who runs out you know, watching games this weekend. Oh, there's so-and-so, you know, first round pick from a couple of years ago, watching the game. That's all great. But you, you kind of have to get ready because when Gino and those guys come to town, they're not going to be coming in <laughs> half cocked. They will come in and say, we got to jump on them early. And that's what the Giants got to avoid. And, you know, the injuries that that have, that occurred during the game. And we don't know, you know, who's going to be back and who's not going to be back. Will, you know, will will the secondary be intact? Because it wasn't intact at the end of the game. I think Banks was in was in the locker room. Uh, yeah. Will will the offensive line be intact? It hasn't been intact. You know, I don't know how long it takes for a person to get over a concussion, but if Brennison can't get over the concussion, you know, pass concussion protocol. That's, you know, I know it's, we got a few more days, but that's Monday night. So you got to figure it out. Will Saquon's ankle be at top strength, you know, so he can play going forward? Or will he be like 75%? Like if he's 75%, you let him go? 
you, you have to you have to ask these questions. You got a long season ahead of you. Like you just you just played a really tough stretch, but now you have an opportunity to make up. You know, get yourself back on the right. You know, right the ship, so to speak. And, and you bring up a good point. You know, Seattle's coming in, and you know they're going to want to play. But at the same point, as you say, Seattle's making a long trip in, coming from west to east. Time time zone difference, playing at night. It's a, it's a night I mean, game. It's a night game for them. It'll be just like playing a four o'clock game. They, it's yeah. not going to bother them at all. You have to remember that. Like the, the the games that hurt the West Coast teams when they come over and play the one o'clock slot. They play the one o'clock slot. It's like ten o'clock in the morning for them. They have a hard time getting their their bodies up and getting going. Coming over playing a night game, they're like that's perfect. Well, let, let let's hope it's not perfect for the something's got to improve off this week. I I would think it would. I would think there's going to be uh, as you know how you just said. Uh, you know, guys shouldn't be going out. Yeah, you want to get away for at least for a day, but uh, you know, just to clear your cobwebs, but. A lot of soul searching. How did this happen? We did not do what we were are supposed to do as as pros. This was not this was not a Giants performance. I mean, the way that the that tackling or lack of you just can't be acceptable. Well, and future yeah. opponents are going to notice that too. That's more of yes. a reason why you got to shore it up. You know, Seattle's going to watch the film, and they've got Kenneth Walker, a powerful back, and they have three really strong wide receivers. And I'm assuming Seattle will probably air it out a little bit more deeper down the field than San Francisco. But the bottom line is, if you continue to show up on film, and Howard can speak volumes to this, where you're not doing something effectively, the opponents are going to continue to test you in that department until you prove to them that you've cleaned that up. So Seattle's the next task. They're going to have to prove that they can protect Daniel Jones and that they can avoid all of that missed tackling. If not, the Seahawks are going to continue to poke the bear. Well, they're going to, they're going to rally to the ball. I think that's got to be the defensive cry in mantra going forward. Like, we got to rally to the ball. We got to get all these hats on this camera. We need to have a lot of people right there. So even if a guy gets a juke, there's three other guys that he has to juke before he can start up field. I mean, and, 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 you know, Seattle has really, really good receivers. And they got, you know, the big guy. They got some really super fast guys. Not that the big guy is fast. He's really fast, too. Yeah, DK but, uh, Metcalf. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but but you, you're you going to have to rally to the ball. Make sure you're going to be – it's going to be a very competitive game from that standpoint. And you just got to – the biggest thing for them, and I mean for the Giants, and it, it, it's they got to find a way to have some kind of major effect in the run game. They have to. There can't be, you know, Christian McCaffrey at one point was was averaging eight yards or nine yards a carry. You can't have any of that. You got to, like, get to them early, stop them early, put them behind the sticks, make them have to make plays. The, the chances of you making every third down, you know, it, it's, it's not very high. Even though somehow, some way we made it high last night, but it's not usually that high. Yeah, and that's why it starts in the trenches as we talk about it because if you continue to give opportunities to the opposition to get after the quarterback, you're not going to be able to take advantage of all these weapons that we've been discussing throughout the course of the offseason. So that is going to do it for us here on the latest edition of the Giants Hangout. Lance Meadow, Russ Salzberg, Howard Cross with you. We are with you each and every week for a roundtable discussion, recapping the latest game and looking ahead to what lies next for the Giants. You can check it out on Giants.com, the mobile app, and your favorite podcast platforms. Have a good one.